Hey, this is the Bible Forum. We're here every Sunday night from 8 until 10 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes we go a little bit longer. And we're looking at life through a biblical lens, and we're trying to solve all the world's problems in two hours or less. I want to talk to you tonight about a study, a research at the University of California. The researchers have found that people who are basically conservative report more meaning and a greater satisfaction in their life than do those who identify as liberal. Now, the definition of conservative in this particular study was a person who seeks to conserve that which was original or pure, as opposed to those who are much more liberal, meaning they're willing to try new and different approaches, always looking for that which works, not necessarily that which is meant to work that way or is right but rather it's workable. The researchers used data from 16 countries for their study. The publication is called The Independent. They're reporting on this. And in this study, the participants reflected on their meaning and purpose in a number of categories. Uh, meaning and purpose, for example, in the present moment, or at the end of the day, or over their entire lives. Conservatives were generally more satisfied than liberals in every category. And researchers noticed that social conservatives generally found their lives more meaningful than economic conservatives. Now, the study was adjusted for religiosity, which is important because it proved that conservatives aren't more satisfied solely because they are generally more religious, although they are. In the United States, 73% of Republican voters are absolutely certain in their belief in God, while only 55% of Democrats hold that same conviction. Pew Research Center came up with that data. David Newman, one of the authors of this particular research, said our results showed that it, meaning the satisfaction factor, can't be completely explained by the fact that conservatives are more religious than liberals and religious people find more meaning in life than non-religious people. They were factoring all of that out. Of course, that's not the first study to conclude that conservatives are generally more content with life. In his study, Cape Breton University psychology professor J.H. McCann found a link between higher conservatism and lower neuroticism. McCann reported that generally individuals with lower levels of neuroticism are happier, and that conservatives repeatedly report lower levels of neuroticism. Now, neuroticism means you're more likely than the average person to be moody or to experience anxiety, worry, fear, anger, frustration, envy, jealousy, guilt, depressed moods, or loneliness. Many conservatives celebrated the University of California study in their meaningful lives by running a victory lap, saying, add conservatives' meaningful lives to studies that show their political candidates are more attractive, and it sounds like conservatives have it made. Sounds a little sarcastic to me. <laughs> Certainly has a personal bias. But think about it. The political, politically liberal today is disconnected from anything absolute, and they don't seem to be happy. The only absolute they own is that they are absolutely right and you aren't. But then wait to the next election cycle and you may see them change a little from that absolute standard. No, no, not moving to the center, but moving farther away from the crazy left extreme. Now, later in the show, I'm going to show you just how close to the Bible is our constitutional republic. 
But the fact is, it is inherent in any belief that once you begin moving from the center of that belief, you are committed to keep moving. Now, unless you deliberately change your belief. It's why these people have so little respect for the conservative view. The conservative view stays largely the same over time. It doesn't swing like the liberal view. The issues change, but conservatives still understand that two plus two is still four. And it doesn't matter where you are or what's at stake. They know you can't get cow's milk from a sow. And if you spend more than you earn, you will eventually be bankrupt. If you pay people not to work, fewer people will work. And that might get you elected, but it will ultimately bankrupt a nation. Look at what President Trump has accomplished in less than 17 months. He has lowered the cost of living, increased the rate of return, stimulated the economy to grow beyond anything the liberals thought possible, provided jobs for a larger percentage of people who haven't worked for years, and encouraged a huge number of previous liberals to change their philosophy. What's he doing that's so powerful? He's applying conservative business sense to politics. You see, no business person in the world runs their business the way liberal politicians want to run this country. And if they were to try, well, they wouldn't be in business very long. Because two and two is still four. And spending more than you earn is still a recipe for disaster. Well, the same is true in religious belief. If your premise is not absolutely solid, you may find immediately su immediate success. But when people realize there's no real spiritual value in that, they'll bail. Now, admittedly, some will look for truth. But most will simply go back to what they were before, which in most cases is not far from where they are in this new Christianity that they embraced. Because this new Christianity is mostly smoke and mirrors. No, not in terms of the entertainment value or the sense of belonging, but where true spirituality or biblical understanding is concerned, ain't a whole lot there. Now, it might sound like sour grapes. I'm not like them. I'm the other side, so I just don't like them. No, I've listened to them for years. And I think we've all watched the evolution. And the evolution of liberals, whether it's religious, political, economic, or any other thing you could think of, has never been upward. The only thing they can say for it is it makes them feel good until they go completely bankrupt, spiritually, financially, morally, whatever. That's some of what this president rescued us from. And I'm not a big Trump supporter. You had to drag me over there and get me to vote because there wasn't anybody else. It wasn't like, oh, he's my guy. I thought he was outrageous. But I knew that if he got any help at all, he'd fix it. <laughs> and he has. And he will. You may not like it. It's not the point. Are you a conservative? Or are you a liberal? Whatever you are, you're that in every area of your life. Be careful.